morning, Thailand, and welcome to the Northwest Seaport Alliance, Seattle and Tacoma, a critical link in trade with the U.S. Before we get started, we'd like to make sure that all of you know how to use the Zoom interpretation function. Next slide, please. This conference has English Thai interpretation. If you need interpretation support, please follow the instructions below. Please make sure to use the latest Zoom version to ensure you have all meeting features, especially Thai interpretation function. Next slide, please. If you have Zoom client installed, please make sure that it's updated by clicking on your account avatar and check for updates. Next slide, please. The menu bar. Contact Zoom for technical support. Raise hand to chat with panelists. Raise questions to panelists. Listen to interpretation. Next slide, please. Interpretation. Upon clicking interpretation, please choose one of the three following options. Choose off or preferred languages if you understand both. Choose English if you only understand English. Choose Thai if you only understand Thai. You want to listen to the interpreter only, choose mute original audio. Next slide, please. Welcome again to the Northwest Seaport Alliance, Seattle and Tacoma, a critical link in trade with the US. I'm Mike Fowler with the World Trade Center Tacoma, your host and co-organizer of today's event. Thank you to the Northwest Seaport Alliance team for suggesting the timely topics to be covered today and their guidance and support for this webinar. I'd also like to acknowledge the assistance of our Thai partners, the Royal Thai Consulate General, Los Angeles, the Thai Trade Center of North America, and the Thailand International Freight Forwarders Association. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, the Port of Tacoma, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, Tacoma Pierce Chamber of Commerce, and of course, I'd like to express my appreciation to our organizers, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Without the cooperation, assistance, and support of all these great organizations, this event wouldn't have been possible. These are our speakers and their topics for today. Port of Seattle Commissioner and Northwest Seaport Alliance Managing Member and Co-Chair Fred Fellerman, as well as Port of Tacoma Commissioner and Northwest Seaport Alliance Managing Member and Co-Chair Dick Marzano will help kick off the event by providing the introductory remarks. I will discuss the U.S. Thai trade relationship. Northwest Seaport Alliance CEO John Wolf will give an overview of the Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway. Northwest Seaport Alliance Chief Commercial and Strategy Officer Tong Zhu 
we'll, we'll get into the Northwest Seaport Alliance trade with Thailand, import supply chain and landside services, and ocean and rail services. As time permits, we'll answer questions at the end. Please feel free to write them at any time into the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen. First, I'd like to welcome Port of Seattle Commissioner and Northwest Seaport Alliance Managing Member and Co-Chair Fred Fellerman to the screen. And he is on a ferry uh, here in our great state of Washington. So if there's a little choppy, no worries. Well, thank you, Mike. And good morning to all our guests in Thailand. I'm sorry we can't join you in person. We'll have to follow up in a subsequent meeting. I'm Fred Fellerman, Port of Seattle Commissioner and as you've heard, Northwest Seaport Alliance Managing Member Co-Chair. And on behalf of the Seaport Alliance, it's my pleasure to welcome the audience from Thailand and the United States for joining us here today. As an international seaport serving trans-Pacific trade, free, fair, and robust trade is vital to the Seattle Tacoma Gateway and Washington State, where 40% of all jobs are tied to international trade. We greatly value our business relationship we have built with shippers, carriers, and supply chain partners using our gateway, especially in Thailand. Your country is fast becoming a key trade partner for our gateway, both for imports and finished consumer goods, as well as market for quality agriculture and are in our refrigerated car. We look forward to hearing and seeing this relationship flourish in the years ahead. And I would like to hand it off now to my fellow managing member co-chair, Mr. Marzano, to finish our welcoming remarks. And I will stay on as long as my cell reception affords me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye-bye. Thank you, Fred. And good morning to all. And I agree with Fred, we should be there in person. Uh, my name is Dick Marzano. I am uh, president of the Tacoma Port Commission and co-chair of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. And I'd like to thank you for joining us today. I'd like to thank those who use our gateway moving your cargo. And for those of you new to the Northwest Seaport Alliance, thank you for taking time to learn about our gateway. We're looking forward to sharing with you how our facilities and key advantages in using Tacoma Seattle can help in your shipping needs. Any questions that or concerns that you have about bringing your cargo through our gateway, please feel free to reach out and we'll always address your questions. We look forward to earning your business. I'd now like to turn it over to Mike to get the program started. And once again, thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Marzano. Next slide, please. Bilateral relations between the Kingdom of Thailand and the United States date back to 1818. Thailand and the US have long been close allies, diplomatic partners, and trading, par trading partners. This bar chart expresses very well the big picture on trade. It's one of continual and steady growth. The US is Thailand's largest export market and has a total value of 34.4 billion in 2020. The trend for US exports over the past 10 years also shows continuing and steady growth. It stands now at about 15.1 billion. Next slide, please. Here's a look at what the US and Thailand are buying and selling from each other. Imports to the U.S. grew by more than 60% over 10 years, while exports grew by more than 20%. The articles that are in bold are those that showed the most growth over the past 10 years. I'll be happy to share a list of the top 10 U.S. exports and imports by value over the past 10 years, as well as those for Washington State. If you'd like to receive this, please send me an email, info at WTC World Trade Center TA Tacoma.org. WTCTA.org. Info at WTCTA.org. Let's look more closely at what we'll call our trade stars. 
those imports that show the fastest growth and highlight business opportunities. Next slide, please. The top stars for imports over the past 10 years were industrial machinery, including computers, which more than doubled, rubber and articles made of rubber, which also more than doubled, vehicles and parts grew more than three and a half times, and optical, medical, or surgical instruments more than doubled. For exports, it was mineral fuel and oil and the like, which shot up almost eight times. Vehicles and parts increased almost five and a half times. Oil seeds and miscellaneous grains grew nearly three times. And food industry residues and waste and prepared animal feed, for example, DDGs, more than doubled. Next slide, please. Where is the US-Thai relationship headed with the Biden administration? There have been obstacles to trade between our countries. We don't have time to get into the details, but in general, we can say that trade has been limited by specific domestic industries in Thailand and in the US demanding and getting protection from their governments in the form of tariff and non-tariff barriers. Also, as you may know, the previous administration, the US administration, was especially concerned about trade balances. This in part led in 2019 and 2020 to the suspension of billions of dollars worth, or about half of the total favorable trade preferences that the US grants Thailand under the generalized system of preferences, or the GSP. In general, the new administration is not as focused on trade balances. Although it hasn't reversed the previous administration's trade policy, I do believe that the Biden administration will be less likely to implement further unilateral trade balancing measures, especially with allies. Instead, the new administration is expected to be more collaborative and multilateral in its approach to trade. Does this mean that the US will join the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership or the CPTPP? You may remember that this was originally negotiated as the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, under the Obama administration. Now it's the CPTPP and the US is not a member of it. I don't think that we will see the Biden administration make any moves to join in the next couple of years, but I do think that pressure is building to become a part of it. The United Kingdom, Canada, South Korea, and now even China want to join the CPTPP. Also, as you know, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the RCEP, of which Thailand is a member, was successfully established and includes China. All of this may encourage the US to reconsider the CPTPP for fear of being left out entirely of the world's most dynamic trading bloc and losing the geopolitical influ influence that comes with strong economic ties. I understand that the Thai government has completed a serious study on the impact of joining the CPTPP and that the study is now under review. If both the US and Thailand were to join, it would give a boost to bilateral trade. But even without the CPTPP, I believe that trade will continue to grow. There are other soft drivers that can, will contribute to this. Next slide, please. These soft drivers also bring business opportunities for Thai companies. Studies show that having an ethnic network in a region promotes trade between that region and the home country of the ethnic population. Statistics are not available for all of our regional cities, but Seattle has the sixth largest Thai population of any city in the US. Our region also has a strong network of organizations that support this population ranging from the Thai Association of Washington State to the Thai Student Associations uh, at our major universities. 
in addition to these organizations, the World Trade Center is connected to a web of other support organizations that welcome overseas firms. This includes local chambers, as well as economic development organizations at the city, state, county, and federal levels. The top photo in this slide is a poster for a picnic to be put on by the Thai Association of Washington later this month. The lower photo is of the Thai Student Association of the University of Washington. Believe it or not, thanks to students with healthy appetites and many of us who love Thai food, there are over a hundred Thai restaurants in Seattle alone. In conclusion, Thailand and the US have a long history of trade that's continued to increase year on year. This trade is not completely free from obstacles, but I believe that the current US administration will result in continued growth in the coming years. Also, soft cultural drivers contribute to the affinity and connection between our region and Thailand. These will also foster trade and business growth. Finally, I'd like to add that as you'll see in the coming presentations, there are plenty of opportunities for Thai companies to take advantage of our being an extremely competitive area for manufacturing and distribution. We have an ecosystem of support organizations that includes the World Trade Center Tacoma, ready to either help you find what you're looking to import, find your distributors for export, or to help you establish your operations in the US. We would welcome your contacting us if you have any interest in this. Write me at info at WTCTA.org. Now I'd like to welcome Tong Ju, Chief Commercial and Strategy Officer of the Northwest Seaport Alliance to the screen. Next slide, please. Thank you, Mike. Good morning, Thailand. Um, Mike mentioned we love Thai food, um, but that's not the only thing. Personally, I absolutely love the Thai language. I think it's one of the most beautiful languages in the world. Thank you so much for attending today's uh, webinar. I appreciate you getting up early and, and being here to, to join us this morning. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is the northernmost port on the US West Coast, located roughly 7,100 nautical miles from Lam Chang Ben, the deep water port Thailand has. Our location makes us a primary gateway for trade between Asia and United States. In addition to Thailand, we do significant trade with China, Vietnam, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Weather patterns in our region are very mild. We don't experience typhoon or hurricanes in the US, that's what they call, or severe ice and snow conditions you see in other parts of the country, making us one of the most reliable ports in North America. We're located um, about 3,800 kilometers away by rail from Chicago, the access point to major consumer markets in the Midwest and Ohio Valley. The rail transit from our gateway to Chicago is normally about four and a half to five days, a very short ride. Our gateway was the first on the west coast of North America to introduce undock intermodal rail. And for many years, we were known as the gateway to Chicago for Asian imports. Next slide, please. Think of our state as the other Washington. While Washington DC located on the east coast drives trade policy geopolitical conversations, and international perceptions. We, the state of Washington, is focused on building connections with the world to promote mutually beneficial two-way trade. 
Washington state is one of the most trade dependent states in, in the US. We ranked 10th as exporter and were the 15th largest importer among the 50 uh, US states in 2020. Our location on the US West Coast and proximity to Thailand and other markets in Asia puts trade at the center of what we do. Our state is also well known for its share of world famous companies, such as, I bet all of you know, Amazon, Boeing, Microsoft, Starbucks, Expeditors, and REIs, et cetera, et cetera. Washington State, where Seattle and Tacoma are located, consistently ranked as top 10 uh, states in the US as the best places for doing business. Our state value of trade with Thailand reached just over 1 billion US dollars, making Washington State your 10th largest US trading partner. Thailand consumers um, enjoy Washington wheat, apples, cherries are also very popular, according to what we, um, we know. We also export a fair amount of scrap metal, which is remanufactured into finished goods, a lot of which are exported back uh, to the US. The other less known fact is that Seattle Tacoma harbors uh, are also one of the top uh, reefer gateways in North America. We export we're number one in, in terms of export reefer cargoes and number three or four in terms of import reefer cargo. Next slide, please. Here is a quick overview of our top trading partner. Of course, this is uh, a reflection of our geographic location. While China continues to dominate our imports, we have seen volumes with countries in Southeast Asia over the last five years grow as more and more US companies recognize and rely on the region's manufacturing and sourcing capabilities. Thailand is currently sixth largest import market for us um, and also our ninth largest containerized export market. Exports to Thailand are on the rise, and I'm confident with your help, we will see our we will see Thailand break into the top five next year, hopefully. Next slide, please. The Thailand has long recognized being the world's largest producer and exporter of natural rubber and rubber products, as Mike mentioned earlier. It is no wonder that tires are our largest containerized imports. Um, we also uh, import a lot of white goods, such as electrical appliances, home, fin home goods, and furniture. In fact, our volume in these two categories have doubled in the last two years. On the export side, it's a mix. Scrap paper exports continue to be the primary export. Although volume has declined given tightening res restriction on exports from the US. Major, advan major advances are, are good uh, wood pulp and paper and paper board. As Thailand continues to grow in importance for finished goods to the US, we expect that demand for these commodities will continue to increase. With that, I would like to ask our CEO, uh, John Wolf, to tell you more about Seaport Alliance. John. Thank you, Tong. And thanks to all of you again for joining us this morning for today's webinar. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is a marine cargo operating partnership of the ports of Seattle and Tacoma. Established in 2015, the two ports share in planning and investment in the marine cargo terminals 
and other infrastructure for the Seattle-Tacoma Gateway. This allows us to prioritize our investments and focus on building the capacity and capabilities to best serve the Asia Pacific trade. Next slide, please. The two harbors are located roughly 48 kilometers apart. Both are adjacent to major interstate highways and are within 16 kilometers of the Kent Valley, the second largest concentration of industrial warehouse space on the West Coast. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is the fifth largest gateway in North America for containerized trade, handling nearly 3.3 million 20-foot equivalent units of containerized cargo in year 2020. As part of our four corner strategy, importers will often select a port in different regions of the US to direct cargo to in case there is a disruption at any one of those ports. We are the preferred gateway for shippers routing cargo through the Pacific Northwest. Next slide, please. In addition to containers, the Northwest Seaport Alliance also is a major gateway for brake bulk and auto cargos. Next slide, please. Here is an aerial shot of the Tacoma Harbor. The Northwest Seaport Alliance operates roughly 711 hectares of industrial property in the two harbors. The Tacoma Harbor is approximately 405 hectares. There are four international and two domestic container terminals in Tacoma. All international terminals have access to on-dock rail, eliminating the time and cost to dray containers off terminal for rail transfer. This means more efficient handling and faster departures for intact rail cargo heading inland. Both harbors are served by the two West Coast Intercontinental Railroads, the BNSF Railway and the Union Pacific Railway. We have naturally deep water harbors and a berth depth of 15.5 meters or greater at our international terminals in both harbors. We are working with the US government to deepen our waterways in Seattle and Tacoma to 17.3 meters to handle even larger ships and increase capacity for the heavier agricultural exports that move through our gateway. Next slide, please. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is investing in two strategic terminals, one in each harbor, to ensure we have capacity and big ship handling capabilities to grow our cargo volumes into the future. This is Husky Terminal in Tacoma. We completed major upgrades to this terminal. Straightening and strengthening power upgrades and the addition of eight 24 wide Super Post Panamax cranes at the terminal. The total investment was $240 million or 5.6 trillion Vietnamese dong. With these improvements, the terminal is now capable of handling two 18,000 TEU ships simultaneously. Next slide, please. This is how things look in our Seattle Harbor. We have three international terminals in Seattle, Terminal 18, Terminal 30, and Terminal 5. Next slide, please. Terminal 5 is the strategic terminal in the Seattle Harbor. Together, the Northwest Seaport Alliance and our private partners are investing over $300 million or 7 trillion Vietnamese dong on improvements to Terminal 5. We're very excited about Terminal 5. With on-dock rail, we expect it to be a flagship container terminal on the West Coast once it is complete. This is a two-phase project, which will strengthen the dock and upgrade utilities to support new Super Post Panamax cranes that were installed just this summer. 
the North Berth will be completed and operational in the first quarter of 2021. So with that, I'll turn it back to Tong Zhu. Thank you, John. Next slide, please. Um, friends from Thailand, um, I'm, I know it's early in the morning. Please, um, <laughs> I wish we can buy you a cup of coffee, but since we're not there, please <laughs> get yourself a cup of coffee or tea. Um, let me come back to the presentation. Um, the three major carrier alliances are, are all in the in our gateway, along with several independent carriers. Our gateway offer a total of 21 vessel services with direct calls to 53 ports around the world and with a total of 70 weekly rail arrival and departures with services to key US destination. In most recent months, in the last 12 months, we have also welcomed five brand new international services to our gateway. Increasing choices and vessel capacity for our customers. As the closest US gateway to Asia, Seattle Tacoma offers fast, reliable, and frequent service to Lam Chan Bang and other major ports of call throughout Asia. Our location makes us a preferred gateway for intact, inter, for intact import rail cargo destined for consumer markets in Chicago and beyond, as well as agricultural exports originating from Midwest destined for Asia. Trade with Thailand has continued to grow in importance and carriers have increased the number of services and upsize their vessel capacity to accommodate the additional cargo. Shippers in Thailand using our gateway have two choice of, uh, have two direct weekly services operating between Lam Chang Ban and our Tacoma Harbor. Of course, many other choices for transshipment in Singapore or Busan or Shanghai. Next slide, please. I just wanted to quickly show you these two weekly uh, services direct call to uh, your uh, largest port, Lam Chang Ban. The Alliance uh, offers a very competitive first port, port of call service with direct calls to Nam Chang Ban before heading to the US. This is a great option for shippers looking to avoid congestion at other West Coast ports. Next, please. I also wanted to point out uh, the next slide. No, no. <laughs> go back, Natani. Zim service. Um, in, in very recent months, Zim launched its own independent service via our gateway with a direct call at Lam Chang Ban, bringing additional capacity and more options for shippers interested in a Seattle Tacoma routing. Next, please. I, I mentioned earlier that. Um, our competitive advantage as a gateway um, brought five new independent vessel services to Seattle and Tacoma harbors. Additionally, we welcomed uh, about 56 ad hoc vessel calls this far, and we're anticipating more coming to our gateway for the balance of the year. Next slide, please. Um, CEO Zhang Wolf mentioned our gateway is serviced by BNSF and UP. Now, we're going through an unprecedented, unprecedented time. Um, I know there's been a huge uh, cargo surge, um, and certainly on the West Coast and in the US. But I want you to know, under normal circumstances, and I, again, I emphasize under normal circumstances, it takes about four and a half days to get to Chicago from Seattle and Tacoma. Our ops team 
in close coordination with railroads, terminal operators, receive train schedule a week in advance, and work to adjust and track the schedule on, on an hourly basis to ensure uh, arrival and departure of trains are, are happening in a timely fashion. Next slide, please. Let me also uh, just tell you a little bit about um, our Gateway's logistic ecosystem. Not only do we have outstanding ocean and rail connections, we also have a robust trucking com community. Roughly 3,500 truckers serve our, service our Gateway. We also have um, abundance of industrial warehouse space near and around our terminals to support transload distribution and fulfillment activities. The greater Seattle Tacoma area has the second largest cluster of warehousing on the west coast of North America, most of it located within 20 kilo kilometers or less of our marine terminals and with easy and convenient access to all the major freeways and rail infrastructure. And may I also mention that um, the cost, uh, as far as if you're interested in renting warehouse uh, or transload uh, space, is roughly 30 to 35% cheaper uh, than, than those space, equal space um, at, uh, at, in LA or Long Beach. And you can, you might recognize some of the brands uh, showing on this slide. Um, many of all of these retailers are in our gateway. They have um, a distribution center of their own or they're using a third party distribution center. Next slide, please. Um, like Thailand, we also offer a foreign treat zone program. Um, I, I won't uh, go into detail because I know this is a very familiar concept to probably all of you in the audience. Um, I just want you to know that we also have a federal program that offers um, FTZ. Next slide, please. Here's what I would like to you to remember. Whenever you think about Seattle and Tacoma, uh, I want you to think about Seaport Alliance. I want you to think about speed, and that's with two S. Um, here's how um, I can help you remember. When you think of Seattle and Tacoma, think about short transit time, that's one S. Think of service options, that's two S. <laughs> think about productivity, that stands for P. Think about efficiencies, that stands for E. Think about effectiveness of our supply chain network, that's another E. And think of diversity in terms of your choice of harbor, terminals, and carrier partners, and that stands for D. So um, together, it stands for speed uh, in Seattle and Tacoma. Uh, with that, um, this is our short presentation uh, on uh, Seattle and Tacoma and Northwest Seaport Alliance. And I believe we have a few minutes for Q&A. Next slide, please. Yes, I see that uh, uh, Ladawan has his hand raised. Ladawan, can you please type your question into the Q&A box? That'd be great. Otherwise, uh, uh, Tong, I wonder, we had some questions uh, in the registration. One of them had to do with how we're, how we're doing with the COVID uh, right now with services at our port. W would you like to, to talk about that? Yeah, I, I would like to actually to invite our uh, CEO, Wolf, to perhaps address that question, Jim. Sure, thank you, Tong. Um, and thank you for the question. Certainly, uh, we are all prioritizing safety within our gateway, and we've taken strict measures to protect 
the workers that are out working the cargo day in and day out within our gateway. Fortunately for us, we've had very few uh, COVID cases that we're aware of, and our workforce has remained fairly healthy through this pandemic. And that's as a result of a strong partnership between the Seaport Alliance, uh, our terminal operators, and our workforce working together to take steps to minimize the risk of, um, of the pandemic spreading. So the gateway is functioning very well uh, with regard to managing through the pandemic. And again, we've had very few uh, cases that we're aware of where individuals have come down with the virus. And when they do, uh, they certainly isolate themselves, um, get healthy before they come back to work. So um, thus far, uh, the gateway has uh, remained open and highly functional. Thank you, John. Um, I do see a question coming in uh, from Nanmanas. And the question is, how many days does it take for a vessel to berth at the, at the port of Tacoma? And, and he notices that there are long delays at LA uh, and Long Beach right now. Yeah, please. Sure. Would you like me to take that tone? Please. Yeah, so great question. Um, there has been uh, significant congestion within the global supply chain. And um, I would say that Seattle Tacoma Gateway has fared well as compared to some of the other West Coast ports. Certainly uh, the ports of LA and Long Beach have struggled mightily uh, with the uh, congestion challenges. And as the question uh, was raised, that is a correct observation. There, I believe today are over 30 vessels waiting to get into a berth in LA and Long Beach. In Seattle, Tacoma today, we have approximately 10 vessels that are delayed getting into a berth. So far less congestion than what our uh, friends down in LA and Long Beach are experiencing. So um, it creates a great opportunity for those shippers that want another alternative on the US West Coast to think about the Northwest Seaport Alliance the Seattle Tacoma Gateway as an alternative to that highly congested Southern California Gateway. And we are continue to do everything we can to manage through the congestion. I see another good question coming here, uh, a follow up question. Um, and is the freight rate or total logistics cost from Thailand to Seattle and Tacoma? How, how does it compare with LA at Long Beach? I would say it's competitive um, and we can certainly, I think different carriers probably have their rates slightly different. Uh, I would venture out to say with those two direct services we have, um, uh, we are the first port of call. I bet we're the cheaper uh, choice than the other ones. And we'll be happy to um, provide additional detail. Maybe we can follow up with this uh, attendee. And Mike, I see there's another question. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it says, um, what, what's the reason that the importers don't uh, necessarily want to ship, uh, ship the cargo to Chicago via Tacoma or Seattle? Um, because this is importer's requirement, not from Thailand's side. Um, thank you for, for asking that question. Now, I don't want you to walk away uh, with the wrong, wrong impression that the fact is many, many importers uh, use our gateway to ship their cargo uh, to Chicago. They, they um, bring their cargo. cargo for growth. So we wanted to continue to promote that service so our gateway can continue to grow. So please um, 
I just want to make sure that um, you walk away with the right impression that we indeed have many, many importers, imports through our gateway um, for cargo destined for uh, Chicago. Well, if I may just build off what you shared, um, during this last year, when there has been significant congestion in other gateways, we have actually seen many importers shift their preference away from some of the more congested gateways like Southern California up to Seattle, Tacoma. And so we've seen a growth of the import cargo just in the last year through Seattle, Tacoma. And I think it offers um, the importers a great alternative to um, into the West Coast through Seattle, Tacoma to the upper Midwest Chicago. And I would encourage you, if you want more specific information to reach out to Tong Zhu and our commercial team and we can provide you more detailed service offerings. Yes, indeed. And I see there's another uh, question asking how long does it take to connect on train to Midwest like Chicago Gateway? Um, now, today it's not necessarily a good reflection. Um, I emphasize under normal circumstances, our real dual time uh, in our gateway is about 48 hours. Um, so today, obviously, because of surge of cargo, it, it is um, longer. Um, but uh, typically, we manage to keep it um, around 48 hours. And I, I see we have um, a message here from Ithacorn, our partner at the uh, Royal Thai Consulate General. Uh, thank you for chiming in, Ithacorn. And, and uh, I think we can get you a promotional package uh, for customers from Thailand to connect to uh, destinations in the US. We will get that to you. Thanks so much. And Mike, I also want to acknowledge there are a number of other questions um, yes. all related to freight rates and total logistics cost. And so um, CIPRA Alliance team can follow up on that and, and yes. provide some uh, you know, sample um, freight rates comparison to that. Yes. Um, I think there's some discussion, some concerns about uh, chassis and uh, equipment. Um, does anybody want to speak to that? John, would you that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, with the uh, higher volume of imports moving through our gateway today and the growth of the business, um, there has been sporadic uh, shortage of chassis. Um, we are managing through that um, pretty effectively. One of the advantages that we have in Seattle and Tacoma is we have a larger percentage of trucker owned chassis within our gateway. And so um, that allows us to be less reliant on the chassis pool to serve the cargo needs. And so that's uh, an advantage that we have in Seattle, Tacoma. So as a result, um, we're not experiencing the same level of chassis shortage that maybe some of the other gateways on the West Coast are experiencing. Okay, I think, I think that we have covered. Uh, do you see anything there, Tong, that we have not touched on or will, cannot follow up on directly with the questioner? I, uh, I don't see anything. Um, I'm trying to look through the questions here. Uh, uh, there's a question about labor shortages um, in the Pacific Northwest as they're having down in LA. Does somebody, would somebody like to address that? Sure, uh, Mike, I can address that. Um, thus far uh, in Seattle, Tacoma, we have very few labor shortages. Uh, and, um, and, and again, it's due to a number of uh, 
things. We have a great training program for our labor force. So they're highly skilled. Um, and we have a local uh, um, uh, labor force in Tacoma and a separate one in Seattle and that they cross over at times. So when one harbor is busy, um, the workers can travel from the other harbor down to um, the uh, harbor that is busy and vice versa. So that gives us some flexibility as well. And so I would say our labor shortages are very minimal right now. And uh, again, an opportunity for you as a shipper to benefit from moving your cargo through Seattle, Tacoma. Um, the other uh, question that I see here that maybe we can address is, uh, what is the overall capacity of our gateway in terms of number of TUs? And uh, today uh, we probably have a capacity of around, uh, would you say Tom, five to 6,000 TUs? So um, part of that is driven by um, the dwell time of a container in a terminal. But I would say during normal times when we're not as congested as we are today, we do have um, excess capacity for handling your cargo. And the good news is, as we mentioned earlier, we're the only port um, gateway on the West Coast that is going to be introducing new capacity, new terminal capacity within the next six months. So with Terminal 5 opening in Seattle in January of 2022, we will add significant more capacity to our gateway where other ports are not in a position to add that type of capacity. So that's another competitive advantage that we offer. Yeah, just to add to what Zhang said. So January of, of 2022, we would add half million to 600,000 TEUs and within the next following 12 months, we'll add another double that. So when Terminal 5 is fully turned on, uh, we're looking at adding 1.3 million TEUs to the gateway, international cargo handling capacity. So we believe um, we have plenty of capacity. We're the only gateway that have this large volume of capacity coming online, as John mentioned. I see there's another one. Um, maybe um, maybe that's the last question we'll take. Um, we're understanding. Mike, are you tracking the next? Yeah, I, I see. I see. I see one here um, that has to do with. Uh, I think it's from uh, Rojanin, and it says that uh, you know the, he understands the Northwest uh, ports are improving in their services and have expedited rail services, but how can they make sure in Thailand that 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 there's going to be enough space on the lines? Um, yeah, John, you want to answer or you want me to go ahead? Sure, I'll, I'll begin. That's a really good question because um, we have heard uh, in the past that there was limited service offerings from um, Southeast Asia into Seattle, Tacoma and, and many more service offerings into uh, Southern California. So um, our commercial team under Tong's leadership reached out to the shipping lines and highlighted um, that we have underutilized capacity at our terminals in both Seattle and Tacoma. And as a result of that good work, um, many shipping lines added new services to our gateway just in the last year. And so we're hoping that um, those new service offerings are responding to um, the need of uh, shippers that want to move their cargo from Southeast Asia through Seattle, Tacoma, and that you have more options. And we will continue to talk to all the major shipping lines about that issue because we know how important it is that you have options um, and that Seattle, Tacoma provides you a good option. So I would um, encourage you that next time when you are considering your shipping 
needs serve, uh, ask for Seattle and Tacoma and um, give Seattle and Tacoma a try. Yes, and, and the earlier question had to do with uh, the importers requesting a certain gateway. Um, I, having, having a bit of experience with both importing and exporting, I know that sometimes uh, when overseas uh, firms are asking for exports, they, they're not so familiar with the gateways and, and uh, they're not as familiar as you will be now on the wait times and the like and the costs. So um, you might wanna suggest to your um, importer that they consider the Northwest Gateway. And there's a very easy question here. Uh, I know the answer, but I think Tong or John should answer it. Uh, are there, are all, both Tacoma and Seattle, do they have on dock rail service? Yes. And um, in Tacoma, as John mentioned, all three major international container terminals have on dock rail. And so that means your cargo do not have to leave, cargo do not have to, does not have to leave the terminal, can go on rail uh, directly from vessel to the rail yard and get on the rail. Um, in Seattle, uh, John mentioned uh, TA Ting. We have on dock rail, one of the largest container terminals in our gateway. We also have T5. Uh, when it's all finished, it will be the largest on dock uh, international container terminal uh, in Seattle. So um, that's very unique feature of our gateway. It's our on dock rail capability. Is there any automation? That's the question. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. You could probably answer that, Tom. Well, um, automation is something that we work closely uh, with our um, terminal operators um, and business leaders, as well as uh, our longshore leadership um, to uh, take programmatic approach um, and so we're constantly evaluating with these uh, stakeholders involvement and input. I would say just um, to build on what Tong shared, today we, we don't have any fully automated terminals in Seattle and Tacoma. What we have um, are um, technologies that are being advanced within the terminals um, and, and those technologies improve the efficiency of the movement of the cargo through the terminal. And so that keeps our, our price point um, very competitive uh, as a uh, cost comparison to other ports on the West Coast. Great, and there's a last question here, import regulations and tariffs, are they different in Tacoma, Seattle versus other ports and they should they should not be. Uh, this is a, a U.S. port and obeys U.S. federal regulations. So they should not be, no. Any other, any other uh, uh, panelists, would you like to have any other last questions to answer? Well, I think, Mike, on behalf of Seaport Alliance and our commissioners and, and uh, our CEO, just wanted to once again thank our uh, co-sponsors for the event, but um, also thank those who are in, in the attendance. Um, it is very much appreciated for us to have this uh, opportunity to connect with our friends in Thailand directly. And we do look forward to visiting your, your beautiful country and the beautiful port sometime soon. Yes, and, and I'd also like to thank our partners, our Thai partners, the Royal Thai Consulate General of Los Angeles, the Thai Trade Center of North America, and the Thailand International Freight Forwarders Association, as well as our sponsors, the Port of Tacoma, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, Tacoma Pierce Chamber of Commerce, and of course, Northwest Seaport Alliance. And until next time, this is Mike Fowler signing off for the World Trade Center Tacoma and the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Good day and for some, good night. Thank you very much.